From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Thursday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, the race to determine the next president of the United States is now down to a few battleground states where ballots are still being counted. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. The battleground states of Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are getting closer to wrapping up their vote counts. The anticipation is we will continue to go through the process throughout the day and into the evening if necessary. The race remains too close to call in those states, with Democratic nominee Joe Biden holding a slight lead in the western states and President Trump with an edge in Georgia. If Biden picks up two of those states, he will be the next president. It's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Or Pennsylvania could send Biden to the White House. President Trump is leading in the Keystone State, but the majority of outstanding ballots are in Democratic-friendly areas. I feel very good about Pennsylvania. Virtually all the remaining ballots to be counted were cast by mail. The president tweeted this morning, stop the count. The president promised he would send in the lawyers, and that's exactly what he's doing with the campaign filing lawsuits in multiple states. The president dispatched his son and personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, to Philadelphia Wednesday. We are going to continue the lawsuit here. We're going to bring a second one, and then we're going to bring a federal lawsuit. Republicans say they are planning to file a new lawsuit in Nevada today. That's on top of lawsuits already filed in Georgia and Michigan, and a demand for a recount in Wisconsin. You're talking about less than 1%, about 0.7% of the vote is the difference uh, between the two candidates. And as you just alluded to, it's about 21,000 votes. Typically, hundreds, not thousands of votes uh, shift in an election uh, statewide. The Biden campaign says it will fight the lawsuits to make sure every vote is counted. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. And the Biden camp has started fundraising to help offset legal costs. It has also set up a website to begin the transition process. Well, no matter who wins the presidential election, Republicans did main control, maintain control of the U.S. Senate. Before the election, many Democrats believed they could take Montana from incumbent Steve Daines and poured in millions of dollars to back his challenger, Governor Steve Bullock. That, of course, didn't happen. Daines blew out Bullock by double digits. He said he believed the high voter turnout benefited his campaign, but even he thought the race would be closer. I don't think anybody saw a 10 point win coming, and yet uh, Montanans understood what was at stake in this election. Uh, despite the fact, I think it will be a, what, 170, 180 million dollar race. Montanans didn't seem to be persuaded by all that out of state money. Governor like Greg Gianforte is not wasting any time getting ready for his incoming administration in 2021. On the day after a winning election as Montana's first Republican governor in 16 years, Gianforte named former Speaker of the House Mike Milburn to lead his transition team. Milburn had been working as Chief of Staff for Attorney General's Tim Fox. Milburn says voters gave Gianforte a clear mandate to carry out his positive vision and priorities for the state. Gianforte defeated Democrat Mike Cooney on Tuesday. Tuesday by 12 percentage points. Well, as the vote count trickles in across the country, both parties are doing some soul searching on how to attract voters into their column. In many cases, it boils down to more of a urban versus rural divide rather than Republican versus Democrat. MTN's Jay Cohn spoke with political analysts Ashley Strong and Eric Stern to bring us their perspective. I would say that um, I think Democrats had anticipated that they would have stronger support amongst certain uh, demographics of what was traditionally their base. Um, we had to discuss this last night, but Hispanics, uh, Miami-Dade, uh, La Latino uh, individuals um, across the country, obviously they're not uh, monolithic and they don't vote the same way. And I think that uh, for too long, the Democratic Party has sort of counted on uh, these groups as monolithic groups that they could rely on, whether they're in urban or rural areas. Um, and that just didn't, hasn't been borne out in the results that we're seeing today. Uh, really, you know, success is, is one on the issues and, and talking directly to voters about these issues. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree with Ashley and, and the Democrats have become a party that focuses first and foremost on, you know, your identity and your, your membership in a group and your skin color and, 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 and your gender and all of these different things. And on the one hand, it's, it's a continuation of civil rights concepts that I think is important for this country to have. 
but it's not necessarily the way to go about trying to win a national mandate. I think you need to be more universal in what you talk about as a political party. And you can watch that entire conversation with political insider Ashley Strong and Eric Stern on Sunday's Face the State program. That's Sunday morning at 930 on all MTN stations. Well, this election has made Oregon the first in the nation to decriminalize hard drugs. Drug users will no longer face jail time for possessing personal amounts of things like heroin, meth and LSD. Instead, they will have the option of paying a $100 fine or attending addiction recovery centers funded by Oregon's legal marijuana industry. Well, it's now time to check in on the weather scene. A bit of a cool down of a lot of wind. That's right. The wind, the first thing, the cool down. The next thing is we take a look across the region. Yesterday, the wind was a big part of the afternoon, especially east of the divide, as we saw a lot of the wind gusts topping 40, even 50 miles an hour. This afternoon now, the winds are even stronger. How about 71 mile per hour gusts in the last short while around Cutbank, Great Falls? You've been feeling the wind. Glasgow, even into the eastern plains, a lot of that wind continues to blow. Current conditions reflecting that wind as temperatures are again climbing will likely set some records across the eastern plains of Montana as we get later into the afternoon. But the cold that Janelle mentioned is on the way as well. We'll take a closer look at that with the forecast details coming up. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, a missing endangered person advisory has been issued for a Custer County girl believed to be held against her will. 14-year-old Serenity Wilson was last seen yesterday in Miles City. She was first reported as a runaway, but police now think she's been kidnapped by 17-year-old Toby Pittman. Authorities say Pittman has made threats against law enforcement in the past and is known to carry knives. Serenity was last seen wearing black sweatpants and white and pink shoes. She's five foot three inches is tall with brown hair and blue eyes. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Custer County Sheriff's Office at 232-3411 or call 911. Well, another five deaths to report across Montana today due to COVID-19 related illness. Those five victims reported in Deer Lodge, Yellowstone, Missoula, Gallatin and Silverbow counties. MTN now reports 443 total deaths. Another 1000 plus positive cases are reported today, pushing active cases to nearly 12,000 here in Montana. Well, the first time for the first time in a single day, the country recorded more than 100,000 new coronavirus cases. Yesterday's 102,000 new cases also sets a worldwide record previously held by India for the most cases reported by a single country in a day. More than 234,000 Americans have died while infected with the virus. Well, an entire Bozeman Middle School class is learning remote for the rest of the week. The eighth grade class at Chief Joseph Middle School will be out Thursday and Friday after a staff member tested positive. Sixth and seventh grade B track students will continue with in person learning. Free remote lunches will continue for pickup at Chief Joseph and the Gallatin Valley Food Bank. Well, the Cats and Grizz will kick off a six game spring season on February 27th. Doesn't that sound funny? UM opens on the road in northern Arizona. Their first home game is March 13th against Cal Poly. Montana State begins a season in California at UC Davis. They also won't play at home until March 13th when they'll meet up with northern Colorado in Bozeman. And of course, everyone here in Montana will circle the 27th of March for the annual Cat Grizz game. Well, there's more ahead on your statewide new news, an update on how about 24,000 Montana small businesses are doing since the Paycheck Protection Program and what's ahead for them. But first, meteorologist Ed McIntosh is in next with your statewide weather forecast.